Ladies and gentlemen, so you guys, this is True Facts: The Remarkable Adaptions of Shrimp. But channel is a Frank, not the Frank one anymore. Yeah, I, I don't know how many videos I missed from the Frank. I'm pretty sure I watched like a video before or something like that. But yeah, it's I think it was about crows, which I couldn't pass because it's crows. Uh, Tears who recently made a crow video, which I also reacted to just like a day or so ago. Uh, obviously another casual geographic reaction i did this has been a zoology animal wildlife week for me because three main channels posting basically close together tier zoo casual geographic and obviously is a frank so this is going to be about shrimp uh yeah uh, shrimp is whenever it comes to sea life uh, when it comes to like shrimp and things like that i don't know i don't have much knowledge about that uh shrimp is like a i don't know food for a lot of people uh, it's a thing that people eat right like regularly for uh, some reason i don't know i'm pretty sure it's shrimp right shrimp and crabs and things like that i don't know but yeah uh i'm pretty sure like they keep it alive until they want to eat then they kill and cook it because there's some reason behind it i don't know what that is but yeah i don't know much about shrimp in that way obviously i you know heard about shrimp in like videos like tier zoo casual geographic in like uh, you know like passing way right i don't know if i watched specific video about shrimp but i don't know so it's going to be interesting let's watch it remember if you like my channel don't forget to subscribe so that way i know which type of videos to react tomorrow and you can help this channel by helping the algorithm uh, you know i react to different type of videos military zoology history and things like that science video games so you know by, by how much interaction i get from this video that will determine what type of videos to react to more so yeah let's watch this one This episode sponsored by NordVPN. This right here is a tiny little egg and it's just about to hatch. Oh, there it is. What emerges is a nauplius or the larva of a shrimp. Now at this point it doesn't really look like a shrimp, does it? More like a painful hug, but that's because it needs some time to grow. As it grows, it molts. It sheds its outside skeleton and grows a new one. and in each molt there's an opportunity to change things up a bit i mean this is a much more radical puberty than getting some hair on your pits but eventually they get their shrimp together and emerge as a juvenile like all arthropods shrimps are made out of segments and each segment can come with its own pair of sticky outy things or appendages now this can be a fairly straightforward way to build a body ask a centipede head body 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 butt but shrimps which are decapods along with lobsters and crabs had to go and make everything more complicated everything's customized the segments all the way in the back have these fanny bits jerry in the uk that means something different you know potato potato tomato vagina it's all right they can handle it Anyway, the next set of segments have appendages called swimmerettes they're quite cute look like they could give a good tickle Oh, well that Wait a minute, is that why fanny pack is called fanny pack because it's close to I don't know. That's some haughty swimming right there, isn't it? Look at my fancy antenna. I mean, you better have ended world hunger if you're going to swim like that. That's bullshit. Now the next five segments have pairs of legs on them, which is a good thing because decapod means 10-legged, and it'd be a shame to fuck that up. It's not always easy to make them out. It's a bit of a jumbled mess. Looks like a man in a trench coat trying to smuggle a bunch of phone cords. Anyway, after that cluster, you have three more pairs of appendages up front that help with the eating. The two pairs right next to the mouth are often quite small, sort of a cross between a mustache and fingers that help cram stuff into their mouth hole. But this third pair here is more like a pair of arms, and they can often get quite long. And what's at the very end of it will often be modified depending on what they eat. You got good old pincers, for example. They're good for grabbing random crap off the floor. I'm going to lie, I don't know why I got creeped out by things like this. Anything that come close to co being a critter or something, right? Like cockroaches and things. I know they're not the similar, but yeah, small thing with a lot of detail that creeps you out. I don't know about that. Another thing fascinates me a lot is that uh small things like world of a small thing is like really different than ours, right? uh a lot of things kind of changes for them like water can be dangerous to small critters and things why because gravity is not much of an issue but surface tension is so water surface tension is a lot so you know you can literally get stuck like so how something gets stuck in a cobweb or something right uh, in those horror movies where giant spiders basically traps humans and things with like this kind of big spider webs and things that's equivalent to the, you know water with this kind of critters and like the those small eyes and how fast they work i don't know it creeps me out but it's also interesting at the same time
floor. And by crap, I mean crap. Or maybe you want to hold on to a fish that you're eating ass first. Whatever, just bring it back to your mustache fingers and bon appetit. But one of the cool things about living in water is there's food just floating around you. You know when you try to catch a snowflake on your tongue? It's like that, but with rotting flesh, clam sperm, and fish feces. Now some shrimp got wise to that opportunity, and they swapped their pincers for whatever those are. Maybe a floppy spork, or Venus fly hands. The bamboo shrimp really went for it. Just sits back and then shloom. I mean, that's how you lick the Cheetos dust off your fingers right there. A bit lazy, but no judgment. Schlump, except for the part where I said they were lazy. Limnomyces benedeni, which is an amazing name, has a more active pig pen approach. Instead of waiting for stuff to float by, they sort of run in place with their little swimmerettes. Sort of looks like if they didn't hold on, they'd shoot forward like in a cartoon. Anyway, this all kicks up a cloud of detritus, which is then funneled in the general direction of their mouths. Oops, <laughs> missed a bit there. Schlump. Now the harlequin shrimp wasn't into all this zippity-doo nonsense, and it decided to go for larger prey. Now first off, they do look crazy. It's like looking into the trash after a balloon animal birthday party. But if you can figure out what's what, you can see that the arm thing they have ends in almost a spatula shape. I know what you're thinking. Oh, it's like a spoon. Finally something appropriate for the soup of the ocean. A bit flat, but certainly more civilized. Wrong. These are spatulas of death. You see, harlequin shrimp are hunters, and what they hunt are starfish. And those bespatulated hands are just right for flipping them over. Like some ornamental pancake you might make for a picky child. Look at that. That's teamwork right there. Of course, the starfish is like with all the things I have to worry about. Now I've got a pair of psycho clowns trying to flip my shit over. And you know what the shrimp do when they flip that starfish over? Yeah, they eat their feet. And I'm not talking about some fetish thing either. Like they actually eat their feet. Because some shrimps are crazy like that. <laughs> <laughs> what is it called? Wiki feet or something? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I, uh, I think in the historian basically led me to that website or something, right? I'm pretty sure it was in the historian. I didn't even know that was the thing, wiki feed, but there you go. Yeah, it's a, a starfish wiki feed, there you go. Yeah, this is so insane, like evolution literally like, uh, you know, made them into have this kind of like spatula type hand just so they can flip, uh, you know, like starfish over. Like specific things, that's insane. I mean, look at this one, it's eviscerating that fish. I bet you didn't know your peel and eat buffet did that sort of thing. And it gets worse, look at that, it takes another fish out of the first fish's stomach. Should have left it in, <laughs> be like an underwater turducken. But there are plenty of shrimp that foster much healthier relationships. This shrimp right here is Lismata emboidensis. It's one of a number of species referred to as cleaner shrimp. And you can see that it's comfortable getting into a hole that many creatures would spend a lot of energy trying to stay out of. Now it's known that shrimp are delicious, so whatever they're doing in there has to be better than eating one. From the shrimp's point of view, of course, they're not cleaning anything. They just happen to like eating at a very specific sort of restaurant. One that serves up dead skin and parasites. And luckily, for these cleaner shrimp anyway, there's a lot of parasites down there. I mean, it's a big enough problem that these shrimp don't even have to go out and find the fish. The fish come to them. They set up shop somewhere and then they do this little dance. You know, like the people that flip those signs around for a car wash. And it's essentially a way to flag down the itchy fishes. I know what you're saying, I wouldn't want a shrimp in my orifice. Well, you probably haven't had leeches. I mean, look at this poor bastard, he's covered in them. I don't know if you really need the arrows to point it out. But for a shrimp, I mean, that's like coming across a tray of shoestring potato fries. They just wiggle a bit when you bite into them. And then you have smaller things like... Okay, yeah, uh, when it comes to like animal teamwork, right? Some teamwork, like, I don't know, like smarter uh, animals like crows and things. They would know what they're specifically doing and how they're doing the teamwork, sure. But things like this, teamwork is mostly evolutionary, right? Like shrimp knows to go there and like eat all the things from the you know mouth. Fish knows that's gonna happen to, I don't know, if, uh, you know, it's just like automation type of way, right? They're not really thinking, oh, shrimp is coming to help me and shrimp is like, oh, uh, this is like a, a great business thing, right? Where we both can benefit. They're not thinking all these things. It's just like evolution, it has become like that ciliated protozoans that bury themselves right into fish flesh. And you know it's satisfying to dig one of those out. It's like getting the meat out of a pistachio nut. Or tongue popping the bean out the pod of a salted edamame. You know what I'm saying. And listen, if you got yourself a case of the parasites, you can look a bit ridden hard and put away wet. All right, fish are always wet, but even wetter. But look at that, after a shrimp takes a turn, eaten straight from your body, you're as good as new. Listen, you might just need something to clean off your parasites. 
I'm talking about those internet parasites you can get from opening up random attachments from your mom or connecting to unsecure networks in the cafe. I know what you're thinking, bring in the shrimp. Shrimp! Well, lucky for you, NordVPN is like the cleaner shrimp of the internet. The VPN part of Nord encrypts your data and sends it through a server in another location. You could be German for a day. Jawohl! But NordVPN also has threat protection even when you're not using the VPN. Threat protection shields you from dangerous sites, malware, and trackers, and it informs you about potential vulnerabilities in your apps. And if you did happen to get a little loosey-goosey with your data in the past, we all have, Dark Web Monitor tells you if someone is leaking your credentials. And you don't want leaky credentials? With everything connected to everything and all your data flying around willy-nilly, you want a VPN. And NordVPN is the fastest on the planet. Go to nordvpn.com slash zayfrank or click on the link in the description. Get yourself a Nord two-year plan and you'll get four additional months. It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Do it today. Go to nordvpn.com slash zayfrank. Get a great service and support a sponsor of this show. Where were we? Oh, right. The relationships that shrimps have with other animals aren't all just short-term and transactional. They can commit. Emperor shrimp get cozy with sea cucumbers and seem to use them for transportation because they're lazy little fucks. Look at that, hanging off the side like it's a Mardi Gras float. Not exactly the express train either, but it does have a fancy dining cart. In spawning season, sea cucumbers will let loose their ejaculate into the water, as is the custom. And the emperor shrimps live out some decadent fantasy of bathing in and eating from a geyser of caviar. And of course, the benefit for the sea cucumber is, it gets to watch. A number of shrimp get into long-term relationships with different sorts of coral. And that's cool because coral can grab f Yeah, see Frank is sad and tech of like animal world, let's just say. It can make anything creepy. <laughs> oh, yeah, sometimes when you really think of this, obviously, like I said, it's not really that level of intelligence going on. It's just evolutionary. But you can see something like, I don't know, like... Uh, Spongebob or something, they're like, oh, look at that, that's real. Shit like that's actually happened. They're like really, you know, like helping each other and shit like that. You can kind of see that, why not? Food right out the water with their little polyp fingers. And then the shrimp can just walk over and take it. And what's the coral gonna do? <laughs> Make a little fist? <laughs> why I oughta... <laughs> and sometimes these relationships go on for a very long time. And they start finishing each other's sentences and wearing each other's clothes. Until it's hard to tell them apart. You know, like Alcyona hippolyte commensalis and Xenia coral. Periclemenis amboinensis might as well be a crinoid. For crinoid loud. <laughs> That's a deep dad joke. <laughs> Those harlequin shrimp, I bet you were wondering, blend into f***ing nothing. Because nothing else wants to look like that. These squat shrimps here don't just stop at looking the part. They do a bit of method acting. I mean, there's see-through ones, there's ones that are sort of see-through. Hippolyte variants comes in two colors, each for blending into a different sort of seagrass. But each of those has the ability to change into the other color. But blending is, sorry, but blending in is just one way to get some extra protection. Periclemenes yucatanicus repeatedly touches the stinging arms of the anemone until it builds up resistance to the poison. And after that, it's got a home base that most things aren't keen on getting too close to. And of course, you can always find yourself a hidey hole or build one. A number of shrimp in the It's basically when you eat a uh, really hot Chinese food, uh, you know, uh, gravy, Chinese food, and basically, oh, it's hot, it's hot. Just keep eating it until it's like you stop noticing. If it, It's still going to be hot, but you stop noticing it. And then you get ulcers or something, and there you go, your life is fucked. But basically, something like that. You constantly get, a, you know, like, uh, damage from that. Like, let's just say if this is a video game, you constantly get damage over time before it stops and you adapts, I guess. Genus Alpheus shack up with the goby fish. The shrimp is in charge of all tunnel-related activities, building it, maintaining it, while the goby, which has much better eyesight, is on watch duty. Sure, sometimes having roommates gets a bit awkward, sort of a third wheel situation, but they've figured out how to make it work. But don't start thinking that these shrimps can't fend for themselves in a pinch, or a snap, really. You'll see. The common names for these shrimps in the family Alpheidae are pistol shrimps or snapping shrimps. And to be honest, what they can do is somewhere between a shot and a West Side Story snap. They have this one enlarged claw with special modifications. The top part of the claw has a piece on it that fits into a hollowed out socket on the bottom part. Using a latch, they can build up tension on that joint so much that the skeleton itself deforms and then snap. 
As it closes, a jet of water is forced out of that hollow through a small opening. I know what you're saying, I can make water squirt with two cupped hands in a swimming pool. That's not a defense. Well, it is if you do it really f***ing fast. Like the whole thing happens in less than two thirds of a millisecond. You see, as this jet of water shoots out, the water... It's literally Fush Roda, but in water, basically, using shockwave to do your thing. It pushes through creates a swirling pattern, almost like a smoke ring. They're called vortex rings. For a teensy moment in the middle of these rings, an area of incredibly low pressure forms in what's called a cavitation bubble. It's basically a bubble inside of which there isn't really any liquid water. And in an instant, the whole thing collapses as water from all sides rushes in to fill the void. This collapse creates a shockwave of high pressure that can stun or even kill another shrimp. That shockwave goes in all directions, so to protect themselves, these shrimp have a <laughs> Look at that, like nuclear bomb has just set off. The shockwave is coming for you. Sort of helmet. There's a layer of water between the outside of their noggin and their brain. When the shock hits, water is expelled out, buffering some of the blow. And it's not just for fighting and hunting either. They do this snap thing to communicate. And it's friggin' loud. These here are snapping shrimp in the genus. <laughs> Basically like that. Mm -mm. <laughs> That's how they communicate. Synalpheus. I mean, look at that big ass claw. They live inside sponges. And you can see, sorry, here they make a ruckus. Now what's interesting about Synalpheus is that they're eusocial. Well, that's right, Jerry. It would be a good name for a social network. I mean, if they still existed and we weren't sucking off the ubiquitous teat of the algorithm. Sorry, these shrimps are eusocial, like bees and ants, with workers and queens. And they're the only underwater animal to do that. Now, there's another sort of shrimp that likes to live in sponges. And it's a different kind of sponge, too. These are glass sponges. Their skeletons are made from these intricate lattices of silica. This one right here is called a Venus flower basket. And the amazing thing is that nearly every single one of these has a male and female shrimp living inside of them. Look at that, you can see one of the claws right there. These shrimps swim into the sponge when they're small enough to fit through those little holes. But at some point, they grow too big to get out again. Apparently there's enough to eat in there, and then they get bored and make some babies. They leave, right? Because they can. And then it's just the two of them, you know, waiting to die. I mean, it's almost like marriage, except, well, it's like marriage. He's like, look, honey, they've come to save us. Wait, don't go. If there's only room for one, just take me. No. <laughs> Sorry, honey. I didn't mean it. No, we didn't. For that shit ended dark. Those shrimp gets trapped inside and that's it. They can't even break out, can they? Oh, God. It's like breeding prison. Have children, just die there. Children's gonna escape. That's insane. Forget mantis shrimp, Jerry. We're just not doing them. Well, because they're not friggin' shrimp, they're not even decapods. Well, I know they're called shrimp. This one's called the peacock mantis shrimp. Three things it isn't. Apparently, you can call whatever you want a shrimp. Look at this, they call this a clam shrimp. If it was actually those things, you'd be halfway to a paella. I mean, some of the ones we showed aren't even true shrimp. But who puts the word true in front of something to add some sort of authority? And don't get me started on prawns. They're shrimp, big shrimp. The British need a different word for everything. It probably means vagina. It's true, Jerry. Half the words in the British dictionary mean vagina. What do you think cup of tea means? That's why they're always on about it. Nobody could drink that much tea. There you go. <laughs> That's what they mean by tea. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Okay. That British and euphemism is not that far off. They have euphemism a lot about private parts. It's, it, somebody needs to make a video about like how much euphemism British use. Or things like that right but yeah yeah a lot of things like shrimps are, uh, that's the case with a lot of like naming of things right uh, after watching casual geographic and tier zoo but also casual geographic mostly i think uh, i realized that certain things are not even part of the same family or belong in the same family tree but have that kind of name like what the fuck but yeah all right well that was true facts the remarkable adaption of shrimp by channel z frank if you like my channel subscribe and i'll see you next time